Larissa Sansur represents the Danish pavilion here at the Biennale with a beautiful emotionally film that lasts 25 minutes almost a uh, long. It's uh, black and white uh, and deals with, please tell us about your film. Uh, the film is called In Vitro, which uh, means anything that is uh, cultivated uh, outside of its uh, original form. Um, and it takes place after an eco disaster. It's a conversation between two women uh, in a bunker underneath the city of Bethlehem uh, after a climate uh, apocalypse. Uh, one of the women is a dying leader and she has all her memories and um, of earth above and she's telling her successor who has never seen the earth uh, what it was like on earth before the disaster uh, the conversation is very much about the tension between two generations a generation that believes that uh, their time on the ground is temporary and uh, what they are doing in the present is only there to cultivate the f f uh, their future and for them to replant the earth Whereas the other generation who ha has never seen uh, the earth uh, what was outside feel resentful things. that yeah. actually their present is the bunker. So for them, reality is the bunker. Um, so the film is, uh, is a, it's, a, it's all in black and white. It's a two channel film. Um, you, um, it's shot in two different aspect ratios, so sometimes the two projection, the projection screens are separate. Sometimes they uh, do uh, in, interact with one another. Um, that's in one room, but the the whole show uh, has um, a, two more elements. One, another element is uh, a sphere, the sphere that you see in the film, but kind of acquires a different meaning when it's uh, taken out of that context and it's put into. Uh, the Danish pavilion um, and the third element is an architectural intervention of uh, consisting of tiles that were made uh, as replicas in Palestine of tiles that you see in the film so in a way all these elements complete one another and ha the whole show has to be seen as as one show uh, where those elements are in dialogue and kind of make sense as a whole you like science fiction used to represent uh, the reality in Palestine, memories uh, and hopes. I remember the film you made on uh, the moon, painting the flag, the Palestinian flag on the moon to the first, uh, and was a woman doing this. So you use this kind of uh, uh, general way of seeing the future to represent the present, maybe. Uh, I think it's uh, quite impossible for us to understand the future without uh, understanding uh, the past or present. And likewise, it's uh, almost when you project things in the future, you understand your present even more. So I find it quite interesting to posit what will happen in the future if things we allow things to continue the way they are in the present or if we kind of keep basing everything that we have in the present on the past. So it's, it's all quite connected in, the, in my films. Uh, temporality is quite blurred and confused and that's on purpose because I think it all makes sense together. Um, I use science fiction because I find the current political dialogue to have reached an impasse. It's, um, it's very hard for me to be dictated by the present uh, current political jargon so I feel it's much more freeing to have my own universe where I could set my own vocabulary I could um, talk about what I want in a very particular way and I think it's important to find a different way of talking about it than the what we hear on in uh, media and news and even the use of the black and white maybe is a way of taking out the colors uh, taking out the emotions just focus on what people say in the film. Uh, I'm glad that you think that black and white makes you uh, focus more on uh, what's being said in the film. The idea was that the, f the whole show is quite binary, so it's a rift between two generations, it's two screens, um, it's life under uh, earth and then life uh, how it was before. So there's all these uh, binaries that are questioned as well. Uh, why? why do things have to come uh, in, in these polars? Um, 
uh, and that reality and fiction that we see as two separate are quite blurred as well so for me all time and and all our understand understanding of history and narrative is quite confused because we ourselves are constructing all these elements thank you